All right. Hey, everybody. So uh, welcome to this week's Crypto Mastery class. And I am remote today, so a little different layout and audio might be a little bit off, but um, got everything queued up for us here today. And taking a look at the overall heat map here, I'm just going to click on the gray here just because we don't need to look at anything that's not moving at all. Pretty much markets for quiet and, um, you know, on a short term time frame, I'm on my other screen watching the uh, one minute, three minute to edging down slightly. You know, I'm watching Ethereum, but we'll look at all this here in a minute with the indicators and uh, on all time frames. So anyway. How's everyone doing? Hope all of you are doing well. If you have any questions, please put that in the chat. And um, I'm going to try to keep class to an hour here today, but um, just taking a look at everything here. Bitcoin's up a percentage point. Ethereum, almost the same. XRP down a little bit. Really nothing going on. So in terms of our normal watch list and the uh, bigger volume. So there is a new screen that I found on TradingView called the uh, Top Gainers. So you guys, if you want, you can Google this. It's just uh, tradingview.com market slash cryptocurrency slash prices gainers. And uh, if you want, why don't I just do this? I'll share that link in the chat and uh, that's going to go there. Okay. And then uh, if you want the heat map, but you can, again, you can Google these. But uh, in terms of putting in there, heat map, so you guys can uh, watch that. It's kind of a good at a glance way to see what's going on in the markets. So we're going to dive into some news here. And next, I don't see any questions, so I'll go ahead and close that. And, um, you know, again, nothing really happening here. The top gainers, let's see, something called Polyswarm. Not familiar with any of these here. Com well, Compound, of course. Compound. So let's look at Compound. What's going on with those guys? Haven't seen them really surfacing. And since the uh, bull market, let's see, we have this SRM up another 14%. This is, uh, I'm sorry, this is the sentiment, sentiment analysis. And uh, so let's take a look at Serum and uh, comp, Compound. So strong project. Let's see. And I'll go ahead and pull up the chart here and see. All right, we've got our multi layout here on compound now this is a little bit skewed on my left here i've got the uh, weekly and so pretty sure this is weekly let's see uh, again i'm not on my normal setup you guys let's see i double click that and yeah that's a weekly all the way on the left hand side and uh <clears throat> not sure why i have that there it's usually 30 seconds usually i go left to right so this is kind of my day trading setup uh, i'm not doing a lot of day trading here lately until waiting on the markets really to recover so you can ignore this box here. I've got a one minute, a three minute over here and a 15 minute there. And so we are pushing up nicely. Been some interesting moves here. This is going to be the uh, daily over on the right side. So let's take a look at the daily uh, before we get into the news and see what's happening. So uh, let's see. Yeah, really pushing up higher here. We see the 21 day moving average kind of pushing up toward the 50 day moving average. So this is bullish. And uh, the little box here that normally would let me open that up here is uh, is not showing for me for some reason. So let's see. Yeah, uh, different lay. I'm on a MacBook here, you guys, and the uh, the window normally on uh, here it is. It's different than on the iPad. Actually, I can't seem to open this all the way up. Well, we'll look at that on a different screen. Let's just do this instead of making it complicated. Uh, I wish. Um, We'll come back to all this, look at compound and go over to just do it on Coinbase. All right. So what's going on with compound here? Kind of moving up here. Nice chart. Not sure why. We'll unpack some news. And let me just turn on our uh, EMAs there and there. I do like how, by the way, TradingView has added the news right into the uh, the charts on some of these. So um, not seeing anything showing up here. Nice uh, chart pattern though. We've got our TSI breaking up above the 20 line. There may be a trade here, you guys. Okay, look at this. So we've got an ERI, the early reversal indicator that is confirming, confirming today with the TSI coming up above that 20 line. So this is a strong signal. And I don't want to underplay this. It's a strong signal. Now we did see something similar back here where the ERI pushed higher, didn't go very far. So let's kind of look left on this. It's still, I think, would be worth. It looks like it's in accumulation here and um, is a double bottoming on support right in here. So I have to turn the ERI so I can tell where the actual bottoming tails are. All right. So what happened there? I believe this 
line. So right in here. So it's putting in support right around this $25.93, around $26. So it's a double bottom. We might have kind of a W formation happening here. The fact that it's held right here at $26 is strong. We have the TSI ERI going higher and the trend uh, or the stochastics RSI also pushing higher. So, hey, um, you know, this looks pretty good. What do you guys think? All right. So uh, I could probably find a longer time frame chart. But if we were to do a Fibonacci on this and say where you think this thing might go, you know, we could see this push up here quite a bit. I mean, we're at $23 down from $900, give or take. So if the first FIB retracement goes to 364, see, this is the name of the game right now, you guys, is so uh, which projects have the potential to go the highest? This is 10X potential right here on comp Compound. Uh, and, and I do wanna just reiterate, I think that now is really a good time to be looking at, uh, at accumulating positions, dollar cost averaging, I do think we'll see a bit of a pullback over the short term on Bitcoin and Ethereum, but some of the other tier ones that uh, are solid projects, Compound is a solid project. I put this on your list and I think I'll add it to our crypto mastery list watch list because I wasn't expecting to see this, but this, you know, we, we look at what the charts and what our indicators tell us. So crypto mastery right there. I'm gonna right click, add that to our watch list. And uh, those of you that are looking to get back into these markets, uh, this is looking pretty good. So 24% already. There's gotta be some news on compound. And for some reason, my news is turned off here. I've got another uh, iPad right here. So I'm just gonna pull that up and see. And um, just scanning the headlines, not seeing a whole lot. Litecoin suggests warning signs. Okay, so we'll look at all that. I just wanted to, to jump through that and see what's jumping out. So Compound, very interesting. We need to keep an eye on that. And uh, those of you who uh, are also in our active trader list, I'm going to add that to our active trader list. We'll add that to our hot list because I think this looks very strong. You know, this the risk reward ratio here is very positive on these. And so when you're taking these trades, uh, you want to also always have like a three to one minimum on the risk to reward. So if we go just to that first Fibonacci area and uh, trading views got this weird bug. I wonder if it's logarithmic view of why that does that. Does anybody know? I don't have any idea why that's. It's, it's the one bug that I think they really need to solve. So if you guys know anyone at trading view, have them fix this place. And uh, or how to reach them because it puts it all the way down there and then we have to kind of come back in. But no worries, we got it. So your risk, your, your stop loss would be down here just below this lower level here. I'd say stop loss around $22. Actually, since it's already pushed higher, you might as well put your stop here at kind of the midpoint or below this support zone right in there. And the point being, this is a 28 to one risk to reward ratio. Even if we, even if you lowered it down to kind of this resistance zone. Why is it a resistance? Because over here, it hit resistance. Uh, it's still a 11 to one risk to reward ratio. So compound looking really good here, guys. All right, uh, what else do we wanna look at on the uh, top cryptocurrencies? So the other one was SRM. Now SRM, very interesting project. Uh, this was with the, it's a derivatives based project that uh, is based on the Solana blockchain. Part was part of FTX and uh, it famously imploded with uh, you know who. And so not, I haven't pulled the chart up yet, forgive me. So we've got Serum. And so a bit hard to find Serum. It's, uh, well, it's on Kraken, that's good to know. And it's on KuCoin. Those probably are your two best bets. And uh, although if you're, if you're able to use Binance, that would also work. Uh, so Kraken, if you're in the US, uh, Kraken is gonna be your best bet for SRM. So basically it's been pushing higher. I had a bunch of SRM that unfortunately recently was sold two months ago. I kind of thought, you know, this isn't going anywhere anytime soon. But that's the thing with crypto, you guys. These things can turn around on a dime, usually when you least expect it and after you sold out of it. So now the reason I like Serum, potentially, although it's going to hit resistance here, they have a great revenue model in that if they're building a derivatives-based exchange, that means if you are trading on it, they're earning commissions. 
So, um, but it's going to have some trouble right here in this range. You know, it's going to be a little while, probably pull back, ideally put in a higher low and then push higher. What are our indicators showing? Yeah, it's getting overbought here. So keep, I'll keep an eye on Serum and I'm going to put my alert right here at 25 cents or higher because that would indicate what? It would indicate that it's broken above this long-term trend line resistance. But this is worthy of even adding a note and saying uh, strong, I don't know about strong, I'd say potential. There's still some uncertainty, right, with the FTX connections, but I hear they're trying to resurrect that. Okay, potential, potential long-term buy. Uh, so keep an eye on uh, Serum if you'd like to. And this, none of this is financial advice, educational purposes only. And we're really here in this class to look at and how to use our amazing indicators that uh, if you're watching on YouTube and you like what you see and you want to learn more about the indicators, you can find out more at CryptoMastery.online. And I think CryptoMastery.org now works, but I don't know. Just to be safe, CryptoMastery online. These are the best indicators we've used in 25 years. Uh, very simple and effective calling tops and bottoms and telling you when to get in and out of these markets. So uh, if you like to make money in these markets, you'd like to have some help with that. These are great indicators, CryptoMastery.online. All right, what else do we want to look at? Let's unpack some news, guys. And uh, I keep forgetting, CNBC is a pain in the you-know-what. Uh, doesn't like to let me see their stuff unless I turn off my ad blocker, but I'm not going to do that. Uh, let's see, we have a chat question here. All coins, uh, AI coins looking good today. All right, Sam, good to know. Thank you. And uh, put this away, put that away. And this is a little bit buggered here, this view. I'm going to refresh this page. And uh, yeah, I'm not sure what's going on there. All right, so much for Coin Telegraph today. Let's see, just skimming the, the news on the right-hand side. All right. Well, uh, let's look for some other news. I don't think there's a whole lot going on here. The, um, you know, Bitcoin's up 12% this month. And, um, you know, there's, it, it's just, it needs to rest. It's up 25%, actually. Uh, this is the last time I measured it since last month. So uh, it's got to rest here for a bit. I think we need to pull back here on Bitcoin. Let me just jump ahead because we've been talking about it. And uh, Bitcoin and, and Ethereum do for pullbacks because of the push it's had all the way up. It's also we're getting a bearish ERI on Bitcoin. Uh, doesn't mean bad. It's not a good thing. It's not a bad thing. It's just a thing. We want to be focusing on buying when the indicators tell us when we get a green uh, ERI. Obviously, that's when things have turned uh up eri early reversal indicator hence the name and you guys can see what uh what i mean by that here just go full screen so we had a nice run up here from bitcoin from down in here and i'll just follow through on that thought i believe that's 25 let's see as i got this thing in the way you got yeah 25 percent. so yeah since june i mean I don't know. These these news companies come out, they say 12% this month is absolutely meaningless because the months in the calendar are entirely human invention, right? So the cycle reversed right here on June 15th. We had an early reversal indicator followed through by our trend strength indicator going green at above 20, right? So, I mean, I don't know, guys, it's, it's really not that hard. Um, Joe and the team have done such a great job building these and this um, TSI when it goes above that 20 line and confirms the ERI as we saw a nice 25% push higher on Bitcoin. So it's time for that cycle to reset a little bit. We have a bearish ERI, so early reversal indicator indicating it should come down. Again, I, I'd like to see it come down, give us a better entry on the bounce. And then the TSI also turning down. Now, the TSI has not confirmed, and it can stay up here for an extended period of time. We could still rally higher, but typically, once it breaks that 80% line here, this time it sort of bounced. But when we got that conclusive kind of breakdown, it tried a few times, but then it cycled back down, and then we had another couple of iterations. So I would not be buying Bitcoin here. Uh, let's see. Any news here? Stocks resilient on the U.S. economy, Fidelity, 
So, okay, so that's interesting. Fidelity is the latest to join the spot ETF race. I didn't know Fidelity. It was only a matter of time, though. We talked about that on last week's class, I think. You know, Fidelity next to further had in the ring. Maybe it was a week before. Uh, Bitcoin bulls grill 31K as Fidelity ETF move, move fuels Bitcoin price strength. Yeah, but they're not approved yet. That's the thing. So here, here's the bottom line on this, you guys. We need to see a break above and a close above 31K. I've been saying this for months. Those of you an active trader know, I've been saying that we need, once we break above 32K and hold, I think it's a pretty quick push up to 48K and 50K. So uh, anyway, there's a number of things happening here. We could look at the Ichimoku, just see what's going on there. We're back above the cloud on the Ichimoku. So this green cloud looking thing and looks like uh, I don't know, it's kind of radon gas. But but to, um, this is bullish. We're not going to get too far. The Ichimoku is just sort of hard to read. We don't need that. Uh, we have that's why we have our radar. We have things like the average true range. So the average true range went bullish also back in here and is still green. So we want to watch that. And uh, I'm going to set new alerts for when we get back up over 31,000 because that's when we're going to, we're off to the races and it's safe to get back into the water, as I say. All right. So I'm just skimming some of my news headlines on another screen here. And um, that's pretty much the big news here. Uh, Cardano community alarmed as Robinhood and Celsius poised to dump millions in ADA. Maybe we'll pull that up here. And uh, on the same page, though, Cardano sees insane growth as Sunday swap its major milestone. Okay, uh, looks like there's some good news on the news page. We'll get to that. Uh, mostly, I want to just show you what's going on with Bitcoin and Ethereum. So here's the thing. I did sell half of my Ethereum the yesterday uh, because uh, we had a bearish engulfing candle. The turn off this average true range here. Now, it doesn't mean I'm right. The reason I do half, and I recommend not doing full positions, but selling half is if it were to rocket higher, I'd still be in the game. If it does pull back, I can buy back in down lower. So it, it does seem the radar is mostly green, but similarly to Bitcoin, we have a bearish ERI, bearish early reversal indicator, which uh, is, is almost confirming it's right. Well, not yet. So I always, I do recommend opening up these indicators full screen because here it almost looks like it's gone below 20, right? But when you open it up, it uh, is not yet. So it's uh, it could go either way here. You know, I think a pullback to the 21 and 50 day moving average is a good idea. Would be good for us to then get back in or accumulate down here on the next ERI, the green ERI and the signal line going green. We had a key and a bell. The number sequence on the trend stopped printing numbers. It can, it can resume. So we want to keep an eye on that. Uh, TLDR on that, uh, not really looking to get into either of those. Solana's on the list here. Solana looking very bearish here, so this is heading lower. If you wanted to short Solana, this would be a good time to do it. It's hitting resistance on the 21-day moving average. The, uh, the ERI is bearish, and the TSI is starting to break. It has broken down. Solana's a short. Anyone looking for a trade, uh, potentially a paper trade, whatever, you know, that's... um. You could uh, look at that, and I think that's a solid. I think that's a solid play there. And now, uh, just quick, a quick look at our micro caps. But uh, I did say we'd look at Cardano and uh, unpack some of the news. Since I'm not finding a whole lot of news here on the um, the charts. Now, here's the thing. I know it's very easy to get to the news on the iPad, and I normally don't do it here, but it's one of these buttons. And uh, so we should make it the same on all these devices because the news is a little tricky to find. Let's see, uh, we've got the data window. Uh, I don't normally mean you do it this way. So, but uh, Erling's calendar, we don't really give care about that. Well, here's the thing. I move that out of the way. Talk to Dr. Google and uh, ask what's going on here. Alrighty, so it's probably a, close enough. Close enough, you guys. <clears throat> All right. So uh, it's pretty similar, a little different on the iPad, but um, yeah, Fidelity rumored to follow BlackRock filing. It looks like they did file. 
there, uh, there is uh, some news on Cardano. We don't really follow Carter on Cardano that much. But uh, you know what? You guys have heard me say, show me the chart. I'll tell you the news. And so we're just kind of delaying the inevitable, which means let's just get to the charts. How about that? So uh, Cardano, uh, Cardano is a slow moving battleship. It doesn't, it's not very exciting. I didn't enjoy trading it back in the uh, bull run. Uh, let's, let me get to a larger time frame so that we can see the history of it. And I'm not sure why it's not showing more of that, but if we go back to Bitfinex, it's going to have a longer history. But, uh, but you know, uh, here's, um, I'm sure it goes back farther, but at any rate, yeah, obviously. So, so basically it's, it's double bottoming on a support level. And so I wouldn't let the news scare us. We have potentially a, a similar pattern to comp, compound in that uh, double bottoming pattern. So just to kind of show what that looks like, you know, coming from high, boom, a little bit of a bounce, retesting the lows here around 25 cents. And uh, so we might expect us to see something and do something like that. All right, checking our indicators. Now, this actually looks pretty interesting to watch. Uh, we don't have an ERI. Actually, I don't know that yet. Um, no, the ERI is not really telling us much. What I'm watching, though, is the TSI. If this starts to go green and back above 20, um, it looks like it will. The stochastics RSI is turning higher, although sometimes it'll double tap like this. But um, but you know, look, um, Cardano, it depends on if you love Cardano. It's, uh, it's kind of a love, uh, I won't say hate, but um, Cardano doesn't excite me. I, I, you know, I think it's worth having some in the long term. But here's the point also, as I've been recommending, look for opportunities that have, you know, 10x potential. Certainly it does. Look at that. So, um, you know, this this looks interesting. And I think a lot of crypto is starting to look really interesting again. And that's uh, a good thing. So why I have a different chart here. I wanted to put on the average two range. So again, that's one of the uh, indicators that we guys, we have. And Let's see, dynamically TR, right? So this is just an easy way to visualize. It hasn't gone, it hasn't signaled an entry yet on the daily. So I would watch a Cardano and just see and wait for that. So I wait for those signals to align and then consider possibly a Cardano trade. Let's see. I think we've covered the news. Do you guys have any news you want me to look at? So uh, your Durable Goods comes out at 1230. I'm not, you know, Durable Goods doesn't really affect crypto that much. Uh, it can move the stock markets and arguably there's some spillover. But um, yeah, I, I think um, it's just we're in the summer doldrums, you guys. Look, the volume is totally dried up. There's nothing going on in the volume. And that's the other side of this. Is, uh, we need to see some nice volume come back in here. Uh, this is a, a weekly trade, by the way, on this chart. Let me go to a daily store on the same page. And it's a little, little more congested here on the uh, daily chart. But uh, Mark's, Max Kaiser, he's an interesting, colorful. So Max Kaiser, apparently, at the Bitcoin conference, he and his, um, I almost said kooky wife, but I, I won't say kooky wife. And uh, but there, I just said, kind of said it. She went up screaming at uh, BitBoy, calling him a scammer. And, um, you know, this is debatable. I think I think I've met Ben. I I, I know him somewhat. He's 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 a good guy that means well, and and doesn't obviously. I don't think he wanted anybody to get hurt, but he made some recommendations and endorsements that he got paid for, and uh, they didn't turn out well. So uh, she made a big scene at the Bitcoin conference, uh, screaming at him and calling him a scammer. Well. You know, so so the Max Kaiser, a controversial figure as well, uh, sparks outrage with controversial comment on XRP, ADA, and ETH. He's basically saying because he's a Bitcoin maximalist, he's basically saying these are all going to get shut down by the uh, SEC, et cetera, and the government. Um, yeah, so scams. He refers to them as scams in a tweet. So, um, but you know, you have to look at people's motivations. Um, is Ethereum a scam? Uh, XRP, these are legitimate companies. I'm not promoting any of them, but Cardano, certainly they have huge ecosystems and real use cases. Cardano is going to have, supposedly has uh, in the works and successfully launched their smart contracts. 
you know, and if you really do your research, smart contracts really are going to be a big part of the future. But the Bitcoin maxis feel that only Bitcoin is are entitled is entitled to all of these uh, great um, riches bestowed on them. But you know, the Bitcoin maxis, uh, God bless them. But there are other coins out there that will survive. So, um, so basically, yeah, he's saying the Bitcoin proponent has referred to all coins except Bitcoin as securities. And uh, because he's trying to protect his big, uh, big Bitcoin that he has under his pillow. Yeah, anyway, nothing against Max, guys. I just, uh, um, he, he's certainly controversial, but, you know, look, he also knows that attention is the new currency. And this is a bit harsh. That's a bit harsh. So I didn't mean to click on that, actually. But uh, anyway, it's the markets, you know, Max Kaiser's not really considered a, um, a huge proponent or source of news. He's not, he's no Michael Saylor. So um, anyway, uh, I don't want to give this guy any more sort of attention and spotlight, but that's what's going on with the news. Well, I know that one. <clears throat> All right. So Cardano sees insane growth, however, as Sunday swap. So I, you know, look, I, I do tend to filter positive news uh, and, um, you know, certainly want to have an overall thesis on where things are but a lot of times the negativity and fud is is uh, ill intended for other reasons you know other coins go down bitcoin go up right so what's the point of, of attacking those coins uh so anyway cardano sees the same growth sunday swap yeah my major milestone so this is not surprising with all the problems with the centralized exchanges and cex's uh money should flow and traffic and and um, uh, you know, sales, uh, which makes money for the DEXs, the decentralized exchanges such as Uniswap, Sunday Swap, and the others, signaling a surging adoption for Cardano. And so uh, this is good. This is good news. And um, I think that um, my my spidey sense is this is probably a good point to start dollar of cost averaging into Cardano. Uh, but there's another news headline we need to look at here. So let's just look over this. The chart tells me that it's holding, though, at a strong support level. And just to get back to that, regardless of what, what this uh, is, and let's go back to the weekly. I do like the weekly for stronger signals, right? So we have this weekly double bottom down in here, and uh, and that's significant. So, you know. I think that uh, we certainly could come down a little farther, but I'd watch that weekly TSI break above that 20 line to potentially push higher. And that would be a 10X on Cardano. I guarantee, see, here's the thing. If Cardano or when Cardano gets back to $3, if it does, I mean, obviously I don't know for sure, uh, but highly likely that's a 10X, you guys. These, this is an opportune time and chart layout in general. Okay. You should, you know, I would suggest really giving that some thought and not have a wait and see attitude because you're going to probably say, I should have put a wood up on that one. You know, and uh, let's just look at a Fibonacci here, see how far down this has come. And, you know, not always, but if it correlates with a level that we're at, that's often uh, interesting to me. To look at all right the 1.618 was considerably lower okay so no worries that that didn't really tell us anything but uh but we can see there's a strong support level in there right above that uh the 25 cent level so at any rate here not to belabor the point if you liked cardano at three dollars you love it now at 28 cents dollar cost averaging and to get back to the ten dollar range it seems uh, reasonable and um and with anything always have a stop loss and trade responsibly so your plays could be right here, you know, how it bounce, take it back up here to the $3. If it goes back to the old highs, you know, and keep your stop losses uh, small. I'm not going to deal with this um, buggy uh, indicator here, but just keep your stops right below, you know, tight stop right below this little dip here around 21 cents. And actually I would probably, I'd make it just below 20 cents. Do a little wider, a little more wiggle room because over here, 
you know, this is a key area uh, right here. It was former resistance turned support. So this should be, this should hold. That's right above 20 cents. So if you put a stop loss at uh, 19.1985, that would be a reasonable stop loss there with a lot of upside potential. What do you guys think? Let's see, can we talk about the Biden regulation news a little more? Let's talk about that tomorrow in Active Trader. Uh, Alex, um, you know, this is this class is really more for the indicators. We're looking at a little bit of news. Uh, I don't want to unpack that just yet. And if you're watching on YouTube, you can learn more about our Active Trader class at uh, moonstream.io. But uh, this class, really, I want to zero in and mostly focus on the indicators and uh, some overall marketing, uh, overarching news. So uh, let's see. Yeah, thank you, Alex. I'm certainly happy to talk about that tomorrow when I'm back in the office. So um, anyway, there's some other news about XRP debating the timing of the Ripple lawsuit and summary judgment. So we could look at XRP. But... I think probably what we want to do is look at some movers. Markets are quiet today. So there's not a whole lot going on. And that's a good time to sort of look at the charts, set alerts on things that when they do, remember, we want to kind of be like Wayne Gretzky, be where the cup is going to be. And when they do get there, then we get alerts saying, all right, this is time to pay attention. Um, XRP, you know, look, it's, it's in, it's got a nice little wedge pattern here. Nothing's really going to move on this until this, this, uh, news the uh, the court case is announced and they've all these rumors oh it's coming out there's gonna be news this is the hillman papers blah 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 well i don't know nothing's nothing happens you know what's the saying that's uh not over till the fat lady sings i'm not sure where they gained that reference maybe that's from the opera days but at any rate uh, this so the point is i don't care what any news is or what anybody says about xrp until it gets back above this clear resistance level. And, um, you know, this is sort of a bullish wedge, ascending wedge. So at some point it breaks out. I have alerts already set at 0.754 roughly, and then uh, above your 0 0.60. When these alerts start triggering, that's when I want to be starting to say, all right, time to you know, maybe get into XRP. But, you know, we could also have one of these big green candle moves. I just, for me, <clears throat> It's it's not one we love because it's not truly decentralized. However, uh, they have a huge uh, head start in the world and they are processing lots of payments, like millions of dollars in payments and maybe in hundreds of millions or billions. I'm not an XRP uh, follower, but but that is shows real adoption. So it's worth keeping an eye on. Okay. Uh, let's see. Dogecoin. I'm just reading on my iPad. Dogecoin. <laughs> Ancient whale address activated nearly after a decade. Uh, by the way, XRP is overbought, turning down on the TSI. And uh, so, I don't know, we're looking at, we don't normally look at these, but let's look at some of these fringe coins and um, the Dogecoin. Uh, and so, let's see, we'll just use Binance. Why not? <clears throat> uh, you know, it's just it's just been sitting here doing nothing for a long time. Uh, wait a minute, DogeUSD. I don't know if I'm on a slow Wi-Fi and just not pulling data very fast, but just this chart, there's nothing exciting about it to me. So, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's not news. All right, so let's do this. Let's go back to, or um, we can look at our scanner. We can look at some other um, coins. I'll just check the whale, or sorry, the... Uh, the heat map here again, Bitcoin starts sort of inching up Ethereum a little bit. I just, nothing's really happening here today. And uh, so good news is we can put those all away, go enjoy some of the nice summer weather, depending on where you are. Let's see, uh, Polygon, let me just, just pull up Polygon, see what this looks like. It's kind of, you know, coming down way off its high. Uh, I do like this new heat map that um, TradingView has come out with. So let's pull up a chart here. And uh, we are on a should be a daily time frame. Uh, it's uh, it's not really showing me. Making sure that um, probably gone. Okay, so look, uh, just let me zoom out. When in doubt, zoom out. I'm not sure what these lines are. I didn't put those on there. They did. 
but hitting some resistance out this here, let's see what that is. That looks to me 200 uh, week, uh, sorry, 200 day moving average, standard moving average. And let's just see what they put on this. Moving averages, moving averages. I, I like personally uh, exponential moving averages, but it is sort of in an entry zone. It's going to hit some resistance here. Polygon, you know, it's pushing up to resistance. I think it does pull back. Not much to see here, as they say. And uh, what else? I can pull up coins if you guys want to look at any other coins. That um, and pull up and just evaluate that based on our indicators. But just like barely anything has moved a percentage point or more. There is some news on this Bitcoin uh, cash. So uh, let's see. I think that's worth talking about. Let's see, there's a question on this XLM. XLM haven't. Uh, yeah, Stellar Lumens, I haven't, talked, I haven't even thought about XLM in a while. Let's just take a look at Bitcoin Cash. Bitcoin Cash pushing higher a bit. And I did see some news on that. Let me scroll through. But uh, let's see, Meteoric, Bitcoin Cash on Meteoric rise with increase 120% in days. Is it that much? But, you know, it's too late now, but uh, 120%, look at that. I mean, but but that happened so fast. So I'm just going to read this. Uh, Bitcoin Cash, one of the early offshoots of the lead cryptocurrency Bitcoin. Uh, this is a, of course, you know what that means, is a hard fork of Bitcoin. And uh, extending its rally, let's see, let's talk about why Bitcoin Cash Network was forked from the Bitcoin blockchain. Serve as a payment network. And let's see, first surge tire, time of writing Bitcoin Cash. All right, let's talk about why. Uh, uptick began after a new cryptocurrency exchange supported by Citadel Securities, Fidelity, and Charles Schwab announced. Ah, oh, that makes sense. So that leads more toward mass adoption. And here, I can probably pull that news article up right here. And yeah, this is what I was just reading for you guys. All right. I uh, love it when a plan comes together. So, um, but basically, what I was just reading is that uh, the Uptick began after a new crypto cryptocurrency exchange was announced, supported by Fidelity, Citadel, and Charles Schwab, three of the biggest. And uh, it's going to be an instit institutional only exchange. Well, I guess that's good because we want institutions buying crypto. They have a lot more money than most of us, I would imagine. Uh, you know, unless your last name is Soros or Musk, um, trading in these four. So that's that's good. I mean, I would, you know, do we want to keep an eye on Bitcoin Cash? Do you want to keep it on your radar? You never know. I, this is a good example of when and why to put alerts on your charts, but I'm kind of at a loss here. It's such a janky chart where, <laughs> uh, and it has these huge gaps, I guess. I wonder why that is. Anyway, this is a janky one. I mean, just, but I'm going to eyeball it. I'm just going to put it at 390 which is above uh, this apparent moving average. I'm not really super excited about following this, but I'll keep it on there. You never know. Uh, okay, so uh, let's see. Any uh, questions? No, uh, we want to look at XLM. David want to see XLM. Oops. All right, here we go. All right, so XLM weekly. So, yeah, obviously been uh, punished pretty badly on uh, this. Uh, well, let me turn off those uh, other indicators there. But the first thing I'm going to do is draw that uh, trend line. And uh, that's going to be overhead resistance along the way. These are not really relevant. This the 200 day, the 200 week is, of course, important. So this is going to be, so we can see a pushback up here in this range. And that would be a potentially a good trade. So let's look at our indicators. I, I haven't seen a TSI flat line like that for some time though. Well, it's actually a less than true. Uh, I'm gonna sort of change my bias from so negative towards hopeful because when in doubt, zoom out. Look at that back here in looks like March of 2020 on a weekly basis was just, you know, hugging along, hugging along the end of the last bear market and then boom. 
So, um, and then again, back down in here, I would be watching for this. And this is something you can set an alert for, David, on this uh, TSI. So I'm going to say TSI, uh, you can do it both above 20 or the, um, I, I, this is the signal. It's a little confusing, overbought. And, uh, but actually, you know, so that would be an early signal when the TSI weekly goes green, but I would, uh, I prefer to, to do crossing up over 20 as the confirmation. Okay, so, so keep an eye on that. I think that, you know, it, it would, at some point it's going to push back up at least until this resistance level, but I would be taking profits in here and I would imagine that uh, I'll just go full screen and draw this because you know it doesn't take a rocket surgeon, as uh, my partner used to say, to know and sort of estimate how these things look. You know, push up here, and let me do that over uh, there. There, you know, as this thing comes down, but this is a profit opportunity, even if. We likely see a retrace, and that's that's how the breakout normally happens. But this, from here to here, let's just sort of spitball this, for lack of a better word. You know, 174 percent potential on that. That's a reasonable trade, and um, you know, it, it's already down. Has to be 95 percent to 98 percent from not to overall high. Uh, you know, as far as is it a good company and, and product and all of those things, I I can't remember what Stellar Lumens does. Uh, they, uh, I was trading that quite a bit in 2021 and, um, I found it difficult to trade. It was, uh, very unpredictable, but that was then. This is now, whoops, I want to do it here though. That is, that's gotta be, I'm going to guess 98%. Look at that. Pretty good guess. 96.76% down. Um, you know, as of today, it's not so bad. It's 96.5% down off its highs. Just a remarkable reminder of what can happen in these bull markets. You know, this entirely speculation and, uh, but uh, you wanna make sure the use case is there. Let's see, maybe you guys have answered that. It's not stellar. Did I do that wrong, you guys? I, I don't remember the chart, XLM, XLM. At 0.097, your chart is of the market cap that I get. Well, regardless, the chart will be similar. I apologize if I got the wrong one in there. Uh, I might have just grabbed the market cap. All right, but the chart's going to be very similar. We can do it again. Uh, and uh, so XLM dollar. Yeah, sorry about that. You guys are right, but still. Uh, we are going to go from there. Down here, it's not quite so bad, 88% down. But uh, yeah, I did. I blew it that way. Um, so I'll do so is on the, but you know, it's good to look at the overall market cap sometimes as well, get the full picture. At any rate, um, we let's take a look at the indicators on this chart. So it's okay. It's turning up a little bit. If you like XLM, how far, let's let me pull this out of the way, kind of half green, half red on the radar. Shorter time frame, four hour daily is uh, sort of bearish. And you want to be aware of this resistance right here, but you're getting a nice uh, TSI turning green. And, uh, but not, not very conclusive there. I, I don't love it, but let's, uh, let's take a look. Oh, and Sam had said the AI coins are moving. We need to get back to that. So, uh, but you know, if you're, if you like XLM, I mean, it's turning green on the, on the uh, TSI, I'd wait for a break. Honestly, I'd want to see it break above uh, this uh, resistance zone there and above the uh, downward trending trend line there. So I would just do maybe an alert right on this area, right about, right around uh, 0 0.11 cents, 0 0.12 cents, whatever, uh, 0.12 personally, but uh, you know, uh, that's just me, the average true range, still red. You may want to wait for the ATR to say enter. 
Okay, so with that, let's do this. Now that's a weekly basis. If you want to look at the daily, we can look at the daily. And uh, you guys probably were looking daily. And how did I get it all the way? Oh, I know, I know, because uh, it, it uh, opened the weekly chart. Okay, no worries. So we've got the green entry here, but still, I, I would I would encourage you guys to look at weekly charts, if not monthly charts, if we're starting to want to buy in the bottom. Uh, that's going to hit some resistance right in here and probably come back. So XLM, I would say, probably you know let it cycle down on the TSI and catch it on the next swing up down in here, and then maybe it'll break break back above. All right, let's do this. Uh, change gears here. I'm going to get to uh, where's our uh, AI coins with the. Bitcoin, I need to get to my drop down on uh, a different watch list. But um, uh, those of us are escaping me. It's okay. Well, no worries. Let's look at are there any AI coins in particular you want to look at, Sam? A couple off the top of my head. Actually, I can pull those up on this other screen here, but we could look at like Ajax is one. Oops. Index USDT, let's look at that. Back on the daily. Turn off this ATR. So again, on these, you want to be looking for ERIs and they coincide with the TSI. So the Ajax looking bearish here. Uh, I did flip out of my Ajax 2X long off this bounce and I went short here two days ago on it. So I think this comes down. So I am trading these, putting my money where the mouth, my mouth is bearish ERI and the TSI starting to go red. We'll talk about that in tomorrow's class on the M3 where we have the whole AI basket. Uh, Ajax uh, looks like to me it's coming down. And what else did you want to look at so here on those render? Yeah, render has been looking weak here. Uh, but you said they're going up and I trust you. Sam's got a good eye for things. So let's see. Okay. Well, um, render's not bad. You know, I, the, I can sort of see the trend line here and it's not exact, but, um, I'm, you know, this, it's, it's not a great looking chart, you know, I have higher lows. I was trying to look, see if I could draw something like that, it's sort of. But uh, it's it's sort of turning back down on the TSI. We have the bearish ERI. Let's look at the weekly. This is one of the nuances of the software is if you if you're not getting a clear signal on, on a daily or, or whatever time frame, zoom out. When in doubt, zoom out. So it is holding this trend line fairly well on the weekly. We just need a little bit more time. Not seeing uh, much else here. I don't see any divergence. Not so much. Just not a lot happening. The uh, stochastics are aside that oversold and looking to bounce, but uh, the markets are quiet. There's very low volume today. Look at how, look at the volume, almost no volume today. So uh, we just seem to kind of wait a little bit. These markets are going to go in spurts and uh, we want to be, you know, taking the best setups. And so anyway, let's see what else. So just going by memory, we could look at uh, this one here. Those of you who know, you know. Uh, this no, not look like the right chart though. Mm -hmm. Why does this chart look so janky? Well, I know we will cover that on another class here. Let's look at the Gemini. Isn't there it on Gemini? Maybe it's USDT usually. Yeah, usually Gemini is USD. They don't like the tether. Um, a little bit of a bearish pullback. Uh, this isn't the chart I'm normally watching, but uh, things are just kind of quiet. Any uh, any other ones, Sam? You said they were looking bullish, so maybe you have one in mind. And otherwise, I mean, this class typically we're we're pulling up the scanner, we're seeing what's moving, layering our indicators onto it. And let's see, what's an indicator we haven't looked at in a while? We could look at the vol index. I think that's a good one we should pull up. Of course, we're also checking out the rest of these here today. So 
let's see. Let's go to the Bitcoin. And so here is a monthly chart. Beautiful candle on the monthly chart. As we have been watching, let me turn off the EMA ribbon. And uh, but look at this. So here's what I would say, you guys, and this is important. Here's some alpha to take away as that. Uh, what's the date today? We it's the 27th. So we have a couple days more in the month. Here's a pop quiz, everyone. Let me turn off this Fibonacci. I'll turn off all these things. Pop quiz. This candle here is a what? And if you'll remember, those of you an active trader, you saw it was a couple of weeks ago. This was a big, ugly red candle. And I speculated, I said, guys, we, we need to wait till the end of the month and see how it looks because it could turn into, and I screenshotted almost this exact candle from somewhere else to say it could do this. I don't know. It's like a little bit of psychic in there. And then this is exactly what happened. This is a a beautiful, not only bullish engulfing candle, but look at this nice long tail on the bottom. I wonder, you know, if we have the we put on the moving averages, could we have a monthly rocket forming? And um, <clears throat> and looky there, it looks like we certainly could. Now this moving average is a bit delayed, so we would be in hindsight. But as it rises, not quite, but the rocket indicator, uh, that's if you, you know, that's what we talk about. And the active trader class has been one of our most powerful indicators. And as you know, last week I, I called. Uh, we were on class. We were on this class last week. I said, "Guys, there's a big, there's a rocket on Bitcoin. This is going higher." And uh, you know, you would have been in earlier. We should have been earlier based on the ERI TSI. But uh, looky here, everyone. Do you remember last week? This candle was only about this far up. It was a rocket on this 50-day EMA, and I was telling you, this is going higher. When we see those, uh, it's uh, it's such a beautiful setup because it went up another 12%, you know? So anyway, on the monthly basis, my point being, on the monthly basis, we are potentially seeing that, those two things happening. Uh, let's see, let me check the chat here. Bullish engulfing, good. Okay, Alex got it. Rocket, what do you think of the overall chart? D oh, you're talking about DBC. Uh, we can look at that. You just said Ajax. Um, did I say something wrong there, Sam? It's possible. We can look at S Dow. Let's look at that. And uh, DBC, I'm not familiar with. Bullish engulfing, you guys got that right. Bullish engulfing, bullish engulfing. Cool. Nice job. All right, let's go to S Dow. All right, let me make sure I get the right one for you guys. SDAO USD. Can't see what exchange it's on. I got the chat in the way, so let me just do that. Um, we'll just use KuCoin and use it with Tether. That's all right with you. And all right, what do we have here? Overbought, looks overbought to me. I think SDAO has also hit resistance and pulled back. You know, right here, my alert didn't quite trigger, but we had an alert there. At 50 cents, these round numbers, either the whole numbers or the half numbers, uh, are significant generally. It's more of a psychological barrier, but it pushed right up to 50 cents, rejected right here. Uh, we, we, you know, it was a nice trade back here with the ERI TSI. And then we had the signal and bell. Technically, the trend indicator is still intact in printing numbers. We're on a number four, so we'll see. If, but that's why this alert is great. If SDAO pushes up 50 cents, then I would say that's of interest, but it is overbought and more than likely pulls back down to the 50 day moving average down in here. But the ideal trade is when your indicators align and you get a, we get another ERI and another TSI from red to green and pushing higher on key and bell and signal. Those are the ideal trades. You can also trade breakouts. So if you get about 50 cents and it kind of pulls back there, and uh, you know, I mean, obviously you can trade whatever you want, but uh, the best way to utilize the signals and the crypto mastery indicators is to follow them. <laughs> it's, it's like the old saying uh, here that customers are good for business. Um, you know, there's a lot of clues here and they don't have to be the complicated ones. So um, 
follow the indicators, um, then certainly if we get a breakout above 50 cents on S Dow and it pulls back, that's a beautiful trade setup. And that's usually what happens. Break through, we test, and go back like that. All right. Uh, let's see. There was a another coin there that um, try to get to this back to the one to keep that in. Uh, was it DRC? Oops. Let's see. I don't remember what that one was. So the chat, I'm getting back to it, guys. DBC. All right. And uh, DBC. Let's take a look at this. Okay, uh, yeah, you're right. Not a lot going on here. Our indicators are not as effective on low, low volume coins. I'm not saying they're ineffective, but they're most effective. And the more kind of volume there is, because they, it's what they they base are based on both lagging. I mean, past. <laughs> it's I don't want to say they're a lagging indicator. These have been excellent for us, but when you're using as far as a leading indicator, but when you're when you're looking at coins like this and it's not really clear, I would suggest zoom out and sort of look at a weekly basis. Uh, it looks to me like it's heading lower uh, and we have a bullish ERI, however, on the weekly, big bullish engulfing candle, but it's just so low, low volume that this chart is not really, I don't want to say it's not readable. I, I will say it can't be relied upon. However, at some point, it's it looks fairly interesting, and you know, this is another example where I would set an alert. For me, the line in the sand is above the twenty-one and fifty-day moving average. So, to be honest, at twenty-four, uh, I would look at this again. But you don't want to be trying to catch a falling knife. Have you ever heard that? And it's very true. The trend is your friend, and all those things. The times where you might want to grab it on the bottom is if it has double bottoms like we looked at on those other two charts and uh you know or if you see like a capitulation sell-off right back in here and then we get an eri but even through here it, it was on it was riding I mean, look at this thing this is with a great holy cow i don't know what is this invesco is this right dbc uh okay deep brain what are we looking at the right one here regardless what a beautiful chart <laughs> here's even if I'm on the wrong one, stay with me. When the 21 day crosses the 50 day EMA, that's when you ride these things and let your profits run. Because this thing was a whatever this was, the Invesco DB Commodity Index Tracking Fund. I think I pulled up the wrong thing, but I apologize. But look at this chart. These are the patterns you're going to watch for in the next bull run. You know, ride them up. And when they pull back, you know, sell when you get the ERI, then buy them back when they hit you know, ERI and that support. And then look at this, the ERI called the exact top by the week, and that was the top of the market. Anyway, uh, let me see. Let me try to fix my error here because deep brain, what were we on? I was not on the right one. We want crypto on here. At least I caught my mistake before you guys uh, told me. And that's probably what all these chats are. Evolution, uh, bullish engulfing, ETO. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, so, but bearish, uh, bearish ERI on the weekly and just not really, see, it's not bullish. That's for sure. I mean, at least on the weekly, let's see the daily. No, there's nothing here, guys. So I wouldn't touch this one in the 10 foot bull. Not, not anytime soon. There's nothing bullish about this chart to me. So, uh, anyway, um, just scamming, uh, scamming, skimming some news, but I was reading a headline about a scam. So I said scamming. Users lose over 1.2 million to NFT airdrop pushing, sorry, phishing scam on Polygon. It's a tongue twister for some reason. So, you know, um, yeah, you hate to see that. You know, it's still the Wild West, it's phishing scams and things. Just be careful out there. I did post something in Active Trader chat, uh, the Signal chat yesterday about this. Uh, and uh, how prevalent and on the rise crypto scams are. Be very careful, everyone. This is my public service announcement. Uh, I had, if you have somebody reaching out to you on Facebook, I'm seeing a lot more of that. Largely, I ignore those. I don't accept friend requests if I don't know people and 
got into a chat. The name sounded sort of familiar. Now, in retrospect, I didn't know this person, but uh, nice looking, uh, you know, looking couple that uh, you started talking and uh, asked me about somebody that um, I'm in a group with. And she said, hey, uh, how are you still in this group with so and so? And I recognized the name. And, uh, and so I chatted with her. That was for me was, OK, I can talk to this person. And it turns out then she started asking me all these questions and uh, or comments. She was actually just making comments on how she lost money in crypto. And, you know, when they start sending like four messages, rapid fire, almost like they're copy pasting it or it's a bot. A lot of these things, scamming things are phishing scams and they're AI bots. I just blocked and deleted and reported the account. The other Think the clues to look for I, I put in the active trader chat so you guys can watch that but basically if they have a facebook chat they have very few photos they have very few likes or no photo likes on their posts you know you get a pretty it's easy to spot these um fake profiles but they uh, have, make no mistake they are after your crypto uh or, or other things um fidelity preparing to submit spot bitcoin etf we already covered that so um i don't know guys there's not a whole lot else for us to cover here right at one o'clock one nice one hour class and more of that so um that's all we only have time for you guys so let me just see you look at the the um i was going to pull up the vol index there and we didn't do that though we will do that before we jump off the ethereum pushing up here a little bit let's see let's take a look at uh, eth what's going on there with ethereum and then maybe we'll look at that vol index, see if that's telling us anything. I, I mean, here's the thing with ETH, though. I like this chart on a weekly basis. We're still in this upward trading uh, trend channel. And uh, what is this fib here that I was doing here? I was doing top to bottom. About, what does this, I don't know. Let me redraw this. I'm not sure what I was trying to do there. But the uh, calling your attention to this trend channel that uh, is here, we're coming up off the bottom of the trend channel. And uh, let's see any news or talk about that. So this is um, overall bullish. I'm sitting here wondering why I sold half of my ETH last night because the daily chart, it's again, when in doubt, zoom out. The TSI is starting to turn up. I, I would, here's the thing though about that. I, I would rather sell out of a position and buy it back with new confidence than hold and, and have that, that uh, confirmation bias that we all have. You know, humans are funny creatures. In the face of in, our, inarguable proof that you're wrong, especially men, we will still hold to our guns, stick to our guns uh, in the face of that that uh you know because confirmation bias consistency of commitment that's how we're wired so that's why i suggest and recommend if you're not sure feel a little uneasy sell half your position potentially not financial advice etc cetera, etc cetera, and reevaluate we also are hitting resistance here okay so you know we push higher above that 1922 level here and here and to be honest i did i i Thought this was a broke out. I went all in and I kind of rode some down and then I sold a little here because, hey, we could go higher, we could go lower. But I'd rather do this and wait till we break back above this 1950 level or that 2000 level and then get back in with newfound conviction. It's better to do that than to hold on out of fear and to have your head in the sand, in my opinion. So that's my story. I'm sticking to it. My good friend Les Brown would say so anyway. Um, but yeah, comp uh, on a weekly basis, we looked at that daily, weekly, both looking good there. Go back to the daily and uh, let's look at uh, the Ethereum. Looks like some resistance there on that comp, but uh, Ethereum vol index. Ethereum now, you know, such a such a this. Look at this. I totally got faked out yesterday. This candle bearish engulfing, reasonable to sell half the position. Today, bullish engulfing, but still we're overbought on our TSI and it's not conclusive. I'd rather be in cash in case of seeing dumps and buy it back lower. And uh, as swing traders, that's um, that's what we we uh, will normally do. Where's my ERI? Oh, it's hidden right there. And uh, yeah, and a bearish ERI. So selling half, that was the correct decision. So sometimes good to just confirm, say, what was I thinking there? And then say, oh yeah, okay. But look at this. The last time the bearish ERI was here and we had a TSI, it dumped. And 
where we want to be buying is on the bullish, the switch over, the bounce point. And our indicators are so good at this, the early reversal indicator, the trend strength indicator uh, built by a quant engineer, our good friend, Joe. And uh, he's a genius. And, um, you know, so we are, these are, we're following the footsteps of giants on those. Uh, anyway, that's how they work. Uh, that's why they work. And uh, click the mastery.online if you are watching the YouTube replay and don't already have them. But at any rate, everyone else, uh, anything else? I see some chat questions. We'll, we'll uh, yeah, our ego, exactly. Uh, women make better traders often because they have less ego and they'll follow the rules. How about that, man? Yeah, so I know we, we can be uh, aggressive, too aggressive sometimes. So let's see, Doji on the weekly, though, for ETH. Okay, let's look at that. And bullish engulfing after, Sam saying, you also had a bullish engulfing after the ERI before the dump. Uh, let's see, I'm not, are we still on ETH? For the dump, bullish engulfing right in here, Sam, is this one? Let's see, after, yeah, you know, you're right. I mean, this is one of the few times when the bullish engulfing candle did not, um, but let's unpack that a bit. I think it's worth commenting. So thanks for mentioning that, Sam. And then uh, I think that we'll go back, David, I'll look at that other one. But so, so I bullish engulfing candles, I love, except at resistance levels. Okay. And, and I've, you've heard me say coins have their own personalities. Not all of them will act that way. But uh, I mean, this here, this is why I totally got faked out. I was recommending ETH here on this breakout, big bullish engulfing candle. Boom. Came back down again. As you pointed out, Sam had a bullish engulfing candle here, failed and went down. So this, so this is suspect. This level here is, and actually, um, well, we'll look at that tomorrow. There's that other order block indicator. I bet you there's a big sell block in there. All right, uh, let's see. And I forgot the other comment David had, and then we'll wrap things up. But uh, what was that here? I've forgotten it already. The, do the doji on the weekly. Yeah, I forget. So, uh, well, where's where's a, a, a doji? I mean, I this is a doji. I mean, this doji here. Yes, of course. Yeah, that, that's a good signal. I like this up, upward trending channel here. You know, we will look tomorrow, we'll look at Bitcoin dominance, Ethereum, ETH dominance, and all the other stuff, total market cap, and um, and all of this good indicators, DXY we're following. So again, uh, if you're watching this and would like more hands-on training, moonstream.io slash M3, or you can jump on a free training this Thursday. At, uh, that would be more about our newsletter service. And um uh, those of you guys who are here live probably already know about that. So anyway, guys, thanks so much. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day. We'll see some of you tomorrow on M3 Active Trader. And then um, uh, we will keep you updated. And um, we'll let you know what we see, what's going on. It's a pretty quiet day. Go enjoy some of the sunshine. Things will be crazy and uh, overactive again soon enough. So be careful what you wish for. If you're wanting some action, <laughs> enjoy the peace and silence. Trust me. You'll uh, we'll thank you for it later. All right, guys. Take care, everyone.